Star Citizen has many transport ships for all kinds of people. From tiny Argo cargoes assisting in the loading of others, to behemoths like the Hully, which waltz around the verse waiting to crash another economy with its near 100,000 SU of cargo. But what should your first transport ship be? Allow me to introduce the Hull A, the newest and most innovative transporter in the verse. Over the course of this video, I will run you through the interior, exterior, take a dive into game loops and break down the role of a Hull A pilot. Of course, if you like what you see, subscribing and sharing this video would massively help grow the channel. Plus stick around until the end and hear about a giveaway I'm running right now. From first glancing at the ship, the Hull A is a sleek chrome cylinder packing some pretty thick engines at the back. Its huge canopy and hidden away turret really sum up the ship. A pilot here is far more worried about touching down safely than strapping turrets to more favourable parts of the ship, so fingers crossed that turret will never be needed. Moving down the ship we have four neatly tucked in thruster pods which whine away in an attempt to bring the ship to a standstill. Two fins straddle the emergency escape pod hatch, so here's hoping you want in a spin, because these fins will definitely come back to haunt you when you're trying to get out. Finally, we come to the thrust unit of the hull A. I love how the design language changes from smooth edges to add a hint of jaggedness, which is very much appreciated, especially when we see the ship's party piece in action. The first of which is this thruster. Just look at this afterburner animation. I thought the vanguards looked cool as their engines opened up, but this? More of this please CIG. Moving inside we are greeted by a very subdued utility room, which overall is perfect. No loose objects, just a storage closet for a flight suit and ample room to get ready in. This room alone shows the story the ship is trying to take you on. Need to go out and fast a box down? Or did you need to do some repairs in the dead of space? No problem, just put on your suit and head out. We can also find easy access to most components, once again making self repairs a breeze. Anyways, enough about my love for well-made airlock rooms. Moving back into a ship, you'll find one of the best solo living spaces I can think of in a ship of this size. Ample room to prep meals means no more boil and bag rations, and a fridge! A tiny, tiny fridge! Step aside backpack water, I'm a fridge man now. As mentioned, we can also find the bed here which doubles as an escape pod. So fingers crossed when you wake up, it'll be inside the ship and not floating around pyro scratching your head. To be honest, the layout of the Hull A is just logical. Sure the weapons docker could be fitted in the other room, but let's not arm the pirates who come on board. So is there a bathroom? Oh yes, and boy is it impressive. For any C2 pilots out there stuffing themselves into a closet trying to have a shower, brace yourself, as this tiny ship has better facilities than your massive ship. A full size shower, permanent sink and room to move about, what more could you ask for? Finally, let's take a look at the bridge, and to be honest, it's very misc. A large sweeping plethora of information followed up by two smaller panels above that provide more than enough information for a transport pilot. Essential buttons are nearby and capped to reduce, how should we say, accidental ejections? As we could see from outside, the massive glass canopy provides great 180 degree horizontal views, but this lower panel is just too big. Looking down is pretty much out of the question unfortunately, which isn't great given the Halle's slight instability problem when landing. This brings me on to the issues of the bridge. There's some odd quirks, for example, why did you put a shut down quantum drive button next to the extend spine button? Is this really a high use switch needs to be put right next to the pilot? And why are the top two screens so far away? I couldn't read anything on them, these should be much bigger or on an arm. So, when it comes to game loops, what will you be doing? Ironically, for once on this channel, it's not bounty hunting around Crusader, it's trading time. And for that, we're going to need a cargo hold. Are you ready to see the Halle's showstopper party trick? Here goes. I can assure you that will never get old. Suddenly this ship goes from a smooth creature able to nip around the place to holding 64 SCU of cargo. And how much interior space do you lose? Well, none of course. This is one of the key benefits to exterior cargo. That gorgeous living space is still there in the full. While obviously the key downside is pirates will steal these boxes far easier. But look at it this way. In a ship this small, they'd have killed you and easily taken the cargo if it was worthwhile. This way you may live. The name of the game here is of course trading. Buy low, sell high and keep the running costs down. And the biggest cost is time. Your time. The faster you can load that cargo, the better. 
This is another key benefit to the Harley. Its magnetic cargo plate should make it one of the faster ships to load, with no cargo ramps or lift slowing you down. When it comes to picking the best cargo trading loops, I don't have a definitive answer for you. Use websites to track the current best loops. I will link some of these websites below. Given the small cargo size of the Halle, low margin, high volume routes really aren't worth it. High value, low quantity commodities shouldn't be strapped to the outside of a ship that's small. So what should this ship carry? Well, in the long term, I see the Halle working in conjunction with other ships such as the Hull C, D and E. While these giants cannot fly into an atmosphere loaded, the Halle can. Therefore, it's very likely we'll see these becoming the runners for their bigger counterparts. Just like in the real world, Amazon doesn't bring a 16-wheeler to deliver your keyboard. A distribution center, such as Pagini Point, will send that cargo on to its final destination with much smaller and efficient ships. While I don't want to give you a full loadout for this ship, let me offer some recommendations. The Halle can be played in two ways. A single system runner bouncing between the sides of Stanton, assisting in a much larger organized supply chain. There will be real demand for small ships that can react and load much faster than medium to large cargo ships. In these cases, I would recommend a fast but moderately efficient size 1 drive, such as the Atlas drive. For other game loop for the Halle or any transporter, there's long distance inter-system transportation. While I don't think this is what the ship is for, its ample living space would tend to disagree with me. In these cases, range is key and therefore efficiency is king. Any detour or stop isn't just time wasted, it's another risk of pirates taking what they want and leaving you with nothing. So to conclude, the Halle. This is an extremely exciting addition to the game as it paves the way for giants such as the whole sea to join the verse. While you can argue the ship will never be the best for long haul cargo running, I would agree, but there will always be a need for small, fast loading ships like this, and for avid transporters looking to pave their way to Star Citizen, there is no alternative. From day one, you can hit the ground running and start making decent money. Just remember, in buying a Halle, there is no versatility for other game loops, like a D&D character Every single skill point is on trading, but damn, for your size, there is nothing that will compete. At the end of the day, I know this ship isn't for me, but it was never meant to be for me. I will spend my days chasing combat, and the Halle will spend its days gracefully trotting from station to station, making dependable income. Although, with an interior as perfect as this, it does make a compelling case. What really makes the Halle special is the quality. Misk has sometimes made questionable, nay illogical interiors such as for Starfarer, but here, no, you are getting refined space perfect for any journey the verse can throw at you. So thank you for watching until the end, or most likely skipping here after the intro, either way you made it. To help grow the channel and say thank you to everyone who's already subscribed and commented on my videos, I will be giving away two standalone hover quads with LTI. These make the perfect LTI token to start off a CCU chain or simply a fun ground vehicle to get around with. To enter, simply subscribe and leave a comment on this or any of my Star Citizen content. Then once I hit 500 subscribers, look out for a separate results video which will contain steps to claim the prize. There is a maximum of one entry per video, therefore if you comment on four separate videos, that's four entries. And best of luck to everyone and thank you so much for subscribing and continuing to support my channel.